And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren back with you again from Cross Timbers Farm here at the Eighth Day Chronicles. Thanks for dropping by with us today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about hay feeders and how to feed the mini round bales. We've had some questions about our preferred way of feeding these small round bales. If we feed them whole or if we pull off uh, flakes, so to speak. Uh, if you're familiar with small square bales, most folks will just pull off a, a flake and put it in a, a feeder, wall mount feeder or something like that in a stall for horses and goats and sheep. And uh, the mini round bales will work the same way. You can lay a mini round bale down and cut the baling twine and roll it just a little bit and it'll come off in layers uh, about maybe three or four inches thick uh, at the most. And you can just take it and pull part of that off and it's just like feeding a, a flake off of a square bale. It works really well. Uh, uh -oh. It's kind of windy out here today. Uh, it works a lot the same way. You can just uh, uh, pull off a, a section of it and put it right in a wall mount feeder or something like that. Uh, or you can um, feed them whole. And that's, uh, that's the object that we're after today. Uh, we'd like to be able to feed these mini round bells whole. Uh, and what I mean by whole is make and design a feeder, a hay feeder, that you can put a whole round bell down in uh, that the animals can eat out of and the design of it to be with very little waste where you can drop one round bale in a in one of these feeders and it lasts for a week or two weeks or you know that depends on however many animals you have uh, that's actually in that area eating out of that feeder if you put these in a in a stall you know with just one or two animals they could last a week to two weeks depending on uh, the amount of volume that, that the type of animal you have eats uh, it, which would be real convenient you're not every day having to go put in feed in a feeder so uh, that's what we're after today and I cannot take credit for this feeder design maybe some of it I can I was talking to another gentleman and he was the one gave me this idea he's been using these uh, barrel feeders for his mini round bales for a while and talked about how well he liked them and how good they worked and how minimal waste he had and it sounded like a win-win situation so at that point I went uh, started looking for barrels and I don't know what's going on with barrels right now it may be different in your area but the economy or whatever it is, I don't know, inflation. Barrels uh, used to be plentiful in this area. You could drive around and find them about anywhere uh, for about $10 a piece. And now you're lucky to find one. And when you do find one, the price of them is outrageous. Um, but however, I did get really lucky and found some barrels about 50 miles away uh, for a very reasonable price. So I went and picked some up uh, to start my mini round bell hay feeder project so we're going to get started on that today uh, and take you along with us in case this interests you if you have a mini round baler and you're feeding horses goats sheep uh, they're absolutely perfect or if you have just a few head of cattle uh, this would be great if you have a large herd of cattle uh, 10 plus 30 head of cattle whatever this is probably not practical but if you have horses goats, sheep, and maybe just a few head of cattle. Uh, this, this is an absolute great option. Like I said, I can't take credit for this design. Uh, another gentleman uh, told me about this feeder that he's using, how he made them out of a barrel, and uh, gave me some really good ideas. 
So uh, I'm going to make some plays on his idea uh, of my own and kind of design it to how I would like it to be. I've sit for a while and studied how I'm going to build this while I was doing other chores. My mind's always turning. And uh, I'm going to uh, put some twists on it that, that will fit my application and maybe it will really fit yours and it will give you some ideas if you decide to build one of these as well. So uh, I'm going to make this as user friendly as I can. I want it to be where I can clean it out really easy, get any old hay out of it. I want it to be able, if for some reason some water got inside of it, and it shouldn't, but uh, you never know, uh, that it will drain easily, the water will get out, uh, and design it for very minimal waste. According to the animal that you're going to be feeding, you can you, you need to build this thing to the height. Of course, a goat feeder is going to be a lot lower, and a horse feeder is going to need to be higher. And it can be done anyway. It's very simple. Uh, but we'll get started with this and take you along, and maybe you'll find something useful that you can use. Okay, folks, we're going to start this build out with a pressure treated four by four by eight. This is going to be the, the main spine, backbone, structure, whatever you want to call it, of this feeder. This is an eight foot pressure treated four by four. And I have already pre measured my barrel, 55 gallon barrel, and I've already pre marked the uh, four by four here, where we're gonna we're gonna cut a, a, a notch out of this this four by four right here. As you can see, I've already pre-marked it for the base sticking out right here for the barrel to sit on, and we'll brace it down below. And the barrel will actually be attached up through here. So let's get started. Our first thing we got to do is cut uh, this notch out. And we'll get started with that. As you can see, we've got our joint cut out. We cut this joint half the distance of our 4x4, which is a 4x4 is actually only about three and a half inches. So we've cut this an inch and three quarter uh, to fit. We've also cut off the bottom of our post. We measured the bottom of our barrel and uh, the distance across our barrel and we've cut a piece of the 4 before off the end um, to fit in this groove as you can see in our joint and it fits in there perfectly just like that okay folks as you can see we've uh, attached our 4 before right here that is in the uh, the uh, groove that we cut the joint in the main post we put four or five uh, three inch exterior screws in from the bottom up into our uh, barrel support and we've also added a strip of uh, metal here attached to the post and then to the the barrel support to hold the barrel uh, steady to hold this arm steady from ever moving. We're also going to go ahead and cut a support post right here at a 45 between these for added stability. So this uh, four by four right here that the barrel sits on that holds the basically holds the weight of the barrel will not move. It'll be there uh, for a long, long time. Okay, folks, as you can see, we have taken a pressure treated 2x4 now and 45 each end on our miter saw and attached it with 3 inch exterior screws to the post here 
that the barrel sits on that, that supports the weight down to the main post uh, for support. Now this, this barrel arm is attached underneath with screws, three inch screws. It's attached on the sides with a plate and has a support under it. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you could sit uh, a lot of weight on this post right now and it this this uh, the post it's sticking out the barrel to sit on is not going to move it's 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 in the uh, joint here uh, and attached in all in several different places and uh, I'm pretty convinced that you could put a whole lot of weight on this and it's not going to break a lot of weight so way more weight than we'll ever put on it with the barrel and a mini round bale. So we're moving right along. Okay folks, we've got the stand basically completed. Um, you can see the base that we built uh, at an angle. And the reason we built it at a triangle like that is when we put the barrel on, you'll see uh, it keeps the, the base kind of out of the, the way of the front feet of goats or sheep or horses, whichever cattle, whichever uh, you're feeding. Of course, we've got this feeder built low, uh, the barrel lower to the ground for, for goats than you would for horses and cattle. Uh, and we've got the barrel ready to mount to the post. And here's the barrel, and you can see with the barrel, it is a 55 gallon plastic drum with a locking lid with a gasket and that is very important uh, to have one with a locking lid with a gasket to keep water out. Uh, and as you can see right now, we have the lid off, but what we did was went to the hardware store and bought some U-bolts where they're, they're kind of squared, but um, they have about six inch threads and we have bought them to fit around the four before post we have one about a third fourth of the way up or a third and then one up closer to the top and with washers and nuts and on the inside we have uh, lock lock nuts I'm sorry with the uh, metal plate that came with the the U-bolts, as you can see them. And we're gonna trim these bolts off right here, right up next to the threads with a hacksaw or a grinder, uh, whatever you have available, you can trim them off. Uh, jigsaw or whatever, anything will cut metal. Uh, sawzall, whatever you need to use. We're gonna trim those off so when the, the bale of hay is dropped down into the feeder, it don't catch on these bolts that are sticking out. So we'll trim those in just a moment. But first, we're gonna give this a test fit onto the feeder stand and see how it works. Okay, folks, let's try the barrel onto the feeder. And to put the barrel onto the feeder, and it's designed this way so I can take it off easily and dump it, clean it, whatever I need to do. So this barrel is easy on and off this stand. That's the reason for I, the, the U-bolts on the back. I kind of designed it that way instead of just putting bolts permanently through the barrel into the wood. I fixed it where I could take this barrel on and off pretty simply and clean it. And I put enough, uh, two of these U-bolts uh, instead of just one so that way the barrel don't swing goats are really bad and horses to push on things and if you put two then it locks it in place where it can't swing so let's just see how this fits on here See, it's going to be easier to do it from the back. There we go. Right on there. 
I believe this is going to work great. I really do. Fantastic. Now we've got to cut our, our feed windows. And uh, we should be ready to start letting animals, uh, the goats, feed out of this. This is fantastic. I'm happy. Okay. Okay, we've got the barrel feed windows cut into the barrel. The barrel mounted to the feed stand. And we're done. We're ready to drop some feed uh, into this barrel, a mini round bale. The whole bale should slide right down in it perfectly. Uh, we've cut three feed windows into the, the feed barrel. And uh, we'll show you that. I think we're going to be happy with this. Uh, another gentleman told me that that it works fantastic and, and uh, I believe he's probably right. We're gonna take this thing on out to the barn and drop a mini round bell in it and see exactly how it does. So I'll give you a quick walk around of the windows and how we cut those and then we'll go to the barn. Okay, as you can see, we cut three windows, three feed stations or windows into the barrel and we cut one in the, the direct front and it's a little bit higher than the two on the side it's about uh, five inches taller than the others for maybe a buck or larger animals and then we cut two on the sides and of course we mounted it with the, the square u-bolts and uh, there's the, the last window on the side. And as you can see, we put a uh, eye bolt on the very top because this is a mobile feeder. I designed this one with the uh, platform on the bottom and it's a mobile feeder. So we can move it from stall to stall and uh, pasture to pasture, wherever we might need it. Uh, when we move from stall to stall, the eye bolt on the top, all we have to do is when we push it up near a wall, is put an eye bolt into that wall and a small piece of rope or chain or quick link or whatever to the wall to keep it from turning over. You know how goats are, they want to put their feet up on everything. So uh, the bottom is pretty secure, uh, especially when you get more weight in it. But uh, just to keep it from tipping over, uh, we put an eye bolt in so we can tie it off to a wall. Um, with horses or something like that that's taller, or even a, a small one like this for sheep or goats, if you quick crete it into the ground, uh, the eye bolt and tying it off to something is not necessary. But for a mobile feeder, uh, one we can move very easily, such as this one, I thought it'd be a good idea to tie it off so it can't turn over on anything. So we'll load this thing up, get it to the barn, and see how a mini round bale goes in. Okay, folks, here we are out at the barn. We finally made it out here with our new homemade, I ain't going to call it self-designed because I did not come up with this idea, but I put my own twist to it, so... One thing I didn't mention earlier is I did drill like three-eighths holes all around the bottom just in case any water got into this this feeder that uh, it would have a way out and drain. So we're going to go ahead and drop a mini round bale into this feeder and see how it does. Okay, here is a nice about a 50 pound round bale. And we're going to pick it up, and boom, right in. Okay, and put the, the lid on. Okay, and we have our locking ring to keep uh, a lid, and our lid does have a uh, good gasket under it. And that pulled it nice and tight. Boom, there we go. It's in there. And that is a nice, nice fit. All anybody have to do is take your pocket knife 
and trim the, the baling twine off. I mean, you can get to it easy right through the through the windows and uh, there you go, ready to feed. I like it. I think this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, I can see that there'll be very minimal waste with this type of feeder. Uh, the next one I do, I may cut the windows a little smaller. This one, the windows are uh, right here. They're they're ten inches wide by twelve inches tall, and I think that's probably too big for goats. Uh, this one was our first feeder, and it was a trial. It'll be okay. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I think that. Instead of 10 inches, if I cut this down to eight or maybe even seven would be better for goats. But uh, I think this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm happy with it. It's uh, uh, perfect for these little mini round bales. And I'll give you a close up here just in a moment of the, the feed windows and how the bale of hay looks in there. Okay, here's a close-up look of the of the hay in the feeder. As you see, you come around, one window's a little higher, and then the other two on the sides are smaller. This barrel, this 55-gallon plastic drum, fits these mini round bales like a glove. I could not be happier. They fit absolutely perfect. It goes in. Uh, nice and tight with just a little bit of room not much it's like uh, uh, these mini round bales was made perfectly for these 55 gallon drums for feed or vice versa uh, like I said I had a quite the time trying to find uh, these drums or barrels recently uh, they used to be a dime a dozen they were everywhere uh, five years ago or ten years ago and now it seems like uh, I can't hardly find them anywhere but I did manage to find a few and uh, we're very happy with this so if if you wondered about mini round bales and how do you feed these things uh, you can feed them like a flake just like off of a, a small square bale uh, you can unroll just a little bit of it and pull it off and it's just in a flake almost like you would on a square bale. Or I think I'm really going to like this. Feed them out of a um, barrel making you a hay feeder out of a 55 gallon drum. Uh, you can put the whole bale down in it, about 50 pounds worth of hay. And that should last, you know, se up to several days to... A pretty long time depending on what you're feeding you know that that's the that's the key but uh, we're very happy I am super satisfied with this feeder uh, thanks to the gentleman that turned me on to making a mini round bale feeder out of a 55 gallon plastic drum uh, shout out to him if he's watching and uh, of course I put my own twist to it this one is a mobile feeder I can move this from stall to stall wherever I need to I've got an eye bolt in the top that uh, will uh, put eye bolts in the wall and just take a short piece of rope or a small piece of chain whatever and tie it off to keep it uh, from tipping over and uh, it's not that heavy uh, without the hay bale in it I mean I can pick it up and move it by myself pretty easy uh, I've not tried to pick it up with a full bale in it, but of course I think you'd be moving these things when they're empty, so uh, I'm very happy with it. Okay, thank you folks for joining us today for our uh, mini round bale hay feeder build. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I'm really happy with this, and if you're considering a mini round baler, and small scale haying equipment and you wonder how you're going to feed a small mini round bale about a 50 pound bale uh, here you go this i believe this is going to be 
fantastic. Much better than a square bale. Pulling off flakes, you can drop the whole bale in this barrel feeder and not worry about it for a few days. So, again, thank you for stopping by Eighth Day Chronicles. We're glad to have you as a subscriber. And if you've not subscribed, we would sure appreciate it if you consider subscribing and give us a thumbs up. Uh, the subscribers and the likes and the comments all encourage us to keep making videos and putting them out there for your enjoyment. And we're enjoying doing it. So it's a, it's a win-win for us. We enjoy doing it and we'd sure appreciate your subscription and uh, liking our channel and keep coming back and checking in for more content. Hit the notification bell. It'll let you know when we upload new videos as uh, we do life here on a small family farm. Uh, and we sure appreciate it. And God bless and hope you have a great evening. Thank you.